In this video, we are going to do ABO forward and reverse typing and RH typing with the weak D or DU. Uh, the procedure can be found on Canvas and it's called ABO RH. All right, so I have uh, taken my reagent rack out. It's been sitting out at room temperature for an hour. Now I have not mixed the reagents, but as far as temperature goes, it's ready to go. Uh, I've taken my patient's EDTA tube, spun it down, and here I have the plasma, and here I've already made the 3% uh, red cell suspension. Uh, so on our results sheet, or our results log, we're gonna go ahead and record the patient information. So today is 10-31-14. Our patient is last name Smith, first name John. Previous history? No, patient doesn't have any previous history. ID number one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Now for our procedure, uh, actually this procedure is broken into three parts, but they've all been put together in one document because they're always done together. So starting with step one for each procedure, we need uh, to label the tubes. So for each procedure, we need a total, uh, or we need two, so for a total of six, 12 by 75 glass test tubes. Now I just found a test tube that has a nick in the top, so we really want to get rid of that. Let's get a new one out. We don't want any sharp edges anywhere. Okay, when it comes to labeling the tubes, of course we have to have some kind of identifier on it, but we're not gonna say, we're not gonna use Smith or even John Smith because, uh, you know, of course there are a lot of Smiths and there may be a lot of John Smiths. So in your facility, more than likely, you're going to be using the last three to four uh, numbers of the patient ID. So in this case, we're gonna use the last four digits of his uh, ID number. So two, three, four, five. So we need to label every tube as two, three, four, five. All right, now we need to label each tube for the individual test. So what we put on the tube is the name of the reagent that is used. So for our forward typing, we have anti-A, next, anti-B. Okay, so for our, our reverse typing, we have A1 cells and then B cells. And then for our RH typing, we have D, and then C for control. Okay, now different uh, facilities are going to have different setups for how you, you know, put your tubes and uh, in your rack. So in this laboratory, what we do is we have all tests that require antisera in the front row, right? That's gonna require the patient's red cells. So that would be anti A and anti B. That would also be uh, D and C. And then behind where we have the patient plasma, we're gonna be using reagent red cells. So we're gonna put all those in the back. All right, let's go ahead and pipette our uh, reagents. Remember the rule of thumb in blood bank that we always pipette clear liquids first. Now I don't say clear reagents, but I say clear liquids because one of the liquids that we're going to be uh, pipetting is the patient plasma and obviously that's not a reagent. So we're gonna go ahead and start with our uh, anti-A. And of course we wanna mix, and don't forget we need to mix the dropper as well. So one drop. One drop of anti-B. one drop of anti-D, and one drop of RH control. All 
All right, now let's go ahead in, our, in the back row and pipette our clear liquid. So as I said before, that's the patient plasma. Now, when pipetting plasma, we use two drops. And we do that because these reagents are very strong. Okay, so we've pipetted all of our clear liquids. Now we wanna go ahead and pipette our cells. So we'll start in the front row and we'll be pipetting the patient's 3% cell suspension. That's one drop in each tube. Okay, now the back. Now I haven't uh, mixed these uh, cells this morning. So we're gonna go ahead and make sure that the bottle is, the bottles are well mixed, get all those cells off the bottom. Okay, these are the A1 cells. They'll go, of course, in the A1 tube. Let's get those, the dropper mixed. And the B cells in the B tube. All right, now it's time to centrifuge, but before we do that, we need to just give a little mix. Okay, we're gonna centrifuge for 15 seconds at 3,400 RPMs. Okay, while this is uh, going on here, we can, uh, I'm just going to, uh, on our results log, looking at the antisera, we have anti-A, anti-B. We are not going to be using anti-AB, so we can cross that off. And we are not going to be using, for the uh, reverse typing, the A2 cells, so we can cross that off. Okay, now remember, rule of thumb, we're reading these tubes one at a time in the mirror and recording the results after, immediately after we've read each tube. We don't uh, read all the tubes and then remember, or try to remember all of our results and then uh, record them. So this is the A1. Okay, so it looks like we have a four plus button there. So on our results log here, we'll put four plus. Okay, anti-B, kind of tricky here getting it in view for you guys to, you know, to look at in the, uh, in the mirror. Okay, so that's coming off smoothly and I don't see any kind of aggregation of cells. So that is a negative, which we will record as zero. Okay, our D. Okay, once again, I don't see any kind of aggregation. It looks like a smooth cell suspension. So over here under D, we'll record that as zero or negative. Okay, let's go ahead and do our control. Okay, again, smooth suspension. So that's negative for the control. All right, let's go ahead and do our uh, reverse typing. So here we have the A1 cells. Okay, again, sm uh, smooth cell suspension. So A1 here with the cells is negative. Okay, our last tube, our B. Okay, so now this is certainly not a four plus reaction here. I see, you know, some small chunks here as well as some larger ones and a pretty clear background. So we're going to call that a two plus.
Okay, so our forward and reverse typing is completed. Now our uh, patient RH so far is negative, which means that we're going to go ahead and do the uh, weak D or the DU testing. So next we're, what we're going to go on to here is we can throw away our uh, ABRH. So to our uh, RH tubes, we're going to add two drops of we use and en enhance, which is also known as list. Now this of course is not PEG, which is something has a similar function, but it is different. So two drops to each. Okay, just a slight mix, and then you can't see it here, but I have a heating block. And we're going to go ahead and incubate those for 15 minutes. All right, uh, our 15 minutes has passed, and I have gone and washed our tubes. Now, you're probably going to be working in a facility that has a cell washer, but here at the uh, Wenatchee Valley College Student Lab, we do it manually, which is kind of a laborious process, so I've spared you that. So in our procedure for week D, we are at step 12, add two drops of antihuman globulin. Okay, so we know that this is basically the IET, the indirect antiglobulin test, right? We're Okay, we've added it. We're going to mix and spin here. We're looking to see if those uh, patient red cells have IgG on the surface. Okay, so here we have D. Okay, now normally when I would be at the mirror, I would be closer to it, but this is, I'm just this far away because I have the camera and I'm trying to read the uh, reaction in the camera. Okay, that looks negative. It looks pretty smooth. I don't see any aggregation of any kind. Okay, so our DU here is negative, so zero. Let's go ahead and take a look at our control. Okay, once again, I don't, uh, I don't see anything happening there. It looks pretty smooth. All right, now the last thing we need to do is whenever we have um, a negative after the after the addition of uh, the antihuman globulin is we have to verify that uh, that we've done the IAT correctly, and we do that by adding our uh, check cells, are also called Coombs check cells. Now, on some uh, result logs, it'll be listed as CC, which it is on ours, or CCC. Okay, we'll go ahead and add one drop to each tube, mix slightly, and centrifuge for 15 seconds. Okay, now for this uh, to be valid, these results, these 
you know, tubes need to be at least two plus. So this is our, okay, we got some big chunks here, some smaller chunks. The background does seem to be getting a little bit cloudy. So we will call this a two plus. So here we have, and now our control, Okay, similar to the last one, we've got small chunks, we've got a little bit of cloudiness in the background, but I'm gonna call that a two plus. All right, so all of our testing is checked out. Now what we need to do is uh, interpret. So with the uh, ABO, we look at our forward typing and we have only the A. In our reverse typing, we should have the B cells. Now, I know this is not the strongest reaction, but it's sufficient. So we're going to go ahead and call this patient A. And the RH testing all the way through week D was negative. Now, we are going to write neg. We don't just put two slash marks or you know, an equal sign to indicate negative. We're going to write out neg. And the last thing is we're going to put our initials. Okay, finished. That was uh, ABO RH with the weak D typing.